Good morning, YouTube. Today we'll be taking a break from our digital workflows and doing some long overdue medium format film shooting. This is gonna be part one of a multi-part series. In today's video, we'll go over the process for capturing macro images on medium format, and then we'll review the developed negatives at the end of the video. Next week, we'll go over my DSLR scanning process and converting the images into positives in post. Finally, in the third part of the series, we're gonna review the work of some photographers that I really like and depart from my usual printing process to dabble in some mixed media printing. It's something I have wanted to do for years, but I have never made the time for. It's time to stop making excuses and get it done. But that's enough jibber jabber, let's get started. For today's video, we're going to be using the Hasselblad 501CM with a 55mm extension tube mounted on an 80mm f4 lens. In 6x6 format, this is a normal lens, so a rough equivalent to a 50mm on full frame. The actual equivalent is about 43mm. Now this combination is going to give us a minimum field width of 2.7 inches, which is perfect for our subject and the images that I want to capture. In the linked PDF, you can view the approximate field width table so that you can select the right lens and extension tube combo for your needs. This table is for the electric tube, so there's limited selection, but it's still going to give you a pretty good idea of what to expect, even if you're using the non-electric versions like what we'll be using today. I'm going to shoot every composition with both T-Max 100 and Ektar 100 using two separate film backs so that I can quickly swap without changing the composition. Now this is one of my favorite features of medium format versus 35mm, is the ability to change film types mid-roll. The T-Max will be developed using semi-stand development in PyroCat HD, and the Ektar 100 will get normal development in CineStill C41 kit. For light meter, we're going to use the Sekonic L558R, and I'll use this both in spot meter mode and incident meter mode, but we'll go ahead and get more into that in a minute. Now I use the state-of-the-art setup in this scenario. I put some black paper attached to an upcycled Amazon box using spray adhesive, probably the same box that this cheap ring light came in. And I've carefully glued some scrap plywood to a plywood base, driving a screw through the plywood at just the right angle to hold this chip clip firmly in place against the base of this gorgeous sunflower that I plucked from my backyard. In all seriousness, this is a garbage setup, but it got the job done. The plywood setup took all of six seconds to build and allowed me to slide the flower to the perfect position rather than needing to fiddle too much with the camera. As long as you can get your subject as close to parallel to your front element as possible, with enough stability to keep the subject from moving around, you're going to be good to go. This was my first time attempting this type of photography. If you watch my channel, you know I generally am out shooting landscapes, especially panos of grand landscapes. I have done some macro with digital in the past, but I have never attempted it on film. It ended up being a lot easier than I thought it would be. Once I was able to get the front element and portion of the flower that I wanted to capture in the right position, I focused just ahead of the parts of the flower that I wanted sharp, and I stopped down to between f11 and f16. The depth of field with this setup is razor thin, so I had to just accept that parts of the image were going to be soft. For the most part, I wanted the center of the flower to be as sharp as possible, with the petals, pistil, and stamen allowed to go soft. Somewhere I hope my 8th grade biology teacher, Mr. Peterson, is smiling knowing that I remember some of that crap. But once I had the focus that I wanted, I would use the magnifier of the waist level finder to confirm focus. To meter the scene, I first used my spot meter to determine the range of values. The difference between the brightest and darkest parts of the image were between 4 to 5 stops. Therefore, all I needed to do was switch over to incident metering, enter my ISO and f-stop, and take a meter reading for middle gray directly in front of the subject. This put my highlights right around zone 7 and my shadows right around zone 3. I had to add one and a half stops due to the distance added by the extension tubes. Now this figure is also in the table in the attached link. After entering our shutter speed into the lens, all that was left is to remove the dark slide, lock up that mirror, and click the shutter. I will never get tired of hearing that sound. I shot two frames for each composition on each roll of film, giving me six total compositions on a roll of 120. Let's go ahead and review them and see how they came out. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I made a major mistake in development and nearly ruined this entire roll. There are two images that I think I'll be able to salvage out of the entire roll, but let me go ahead and show you what I did wrong. 
Now I have two types of lids for my Jobo tanks, and you can see this first one here is meant for inversion processing, which is what I was doing. It has a rubber stopper that keeps the fluid in, but it also has this funnel, which meets the sprocket to create a light tight seal. The other lid, which is meant for rotary processing, also has that funnel in place and is also a daylight tank. However, you can see on this lid, that funnel broke off and I did not notice this. It's still not the right lid to use for inversion processing, but it still would have been okay because when I turned on the lights, it would have been light safe. So what happened was I turned on the lights and I had a towel over the unit, which I always do, so I could do a final check before exposing it to light in case I made any mistakes. And this time I felt the lid, realizing I had the wrong lid. And as soon as I stuck a finger inside, I realized even worse, there's no baffle and I was exposing this whole roll to light. I sprinted to the light switch, but it was too late. Swapped the lid and developed it anyway, hoping that at least some of the images would be usable. Uh, you can see here, these are all completely gone and no good, but the very center of the roll, I have one image here, the very last one, which has a little bit of fogging here on the edge. So I'm hoping that when I scan it, I could still use this as a six by uh, four and a half uh, centimeter image and just trim off these edges because I really like this image and I'm really hopeful that it's salvageable. But just a huge bonehead error on my part, uh, just not paying enough attention, trying to move too quickly. Um, and just needed to slow down and think about what I was doing. Okay, here are our color negative images. And as you can see, I basically have five compositions. So I have the ones where I focused on the center of the flower with the petals going around it. Now the difference between these two is where I focused and how I exposed. This one here, I focused on the center of the flower in the very middle and let everything else go out of focus. And I exposed for the majority of the center of the image here. On this one, I focused just on the very tips and I exposed for those tips, allowing everything else to go dark. And what I'm hoping is that when I scan this, it's almost gonna look like stars against the night sky with the petals falling off around it. I don't know, this was an experiment. It's probably not gonna work out. And then these two images here, one that just has the top of the flower and then this one, which is just the corner. And this was actually the composition that I had as an idea in my head. Um, and is overall, I think, the one that I'm happiest with. Now this one here that has the uh, back of the flower with the light shining towards me through the petals, I unfortunately underexposed. I had a hard time metering this because the light was shining through the flower and it was hard to know exactly how to expose it. I should have given it at least another stop, if not a stop and a half. And it's a shame because I actually really like this composition. Um, it was one I hadn't thought of initially, but as I was playing around, I found it. And as I was shooting, it was my favorite composition. And I'm a little bit disappointed to see that I botched it on the execution. But hopefully when I scan these in, I can still salvage this one. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I mentioned at the open, this is just the start of this series. I'm very happy with how the negatives came out, but I have big plans for how I want to finish them. Make sure you come back next week so we can scan these files and see the final product. And even if you don't shoot film, I hope this has maybe given you some ideas on images that you can capture right in your own home. I understand everybody might not have the state-of-the-art cardboard skills that I have, but I think you can get something put together that's going to get the job done. Anyways, that's going to do it for me this week. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images. Mm -hmm.